What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I was looking through the whiskey cabinet tonight. I figured we'd do a review of this scotch. It's a uh, Lock Loman 12 year. Kind of put it through its paces, you know, over the course of a few months. Um, pretty run of the mill scotch. Should be able to find it at your local retail shops, uh, grocery stores. Um, but yeah, Lock uh, Lamon 12 year. Let's get into it. So Lock Loman guys, or Lock Lamon, I don't know. We're gonna go with Lock Loman. Um we got one poured up. Um uh, so the color on it, it looks like it would be a 12 year scotch, but it really doesn't matter because it's um uh, I'm sure they added color into it. Um uh, it doesn't claim to be a uh, natural color, but it is, they do say on here it's non-chill filtered. So, uh, non-chill non filtered uh, Highland whiskey. Um, they claim it to be perfectly balanced. Uh, gentle hint of smoke. So it is a lightly peated whiskey. Um, nothing comparing to, I mean, we've kind of put it through his paces. Um, you know, over the course of a few months, but, um, we'll get into this though. Like it is lightly peated. So they do make, uh, it's all ex bourbon cask. So no sherry cask finishes in here, no shared whiskey. So it's all ex bourbon, but they finish their, um, their, their stuff. It's all made in ex bourbon that's been in recharred rejuvenated cask so uh there's a cooperage on site at Loch Lomond and they're taking these casks and uh, the problem with it is is how how many times they're reusing the cask because it could be older casks it's not brand new casks if they're recharging them uh rejuvenating them I don't know uh on the nose though every time I smell this We've been through the whiskey. We've had a few drinks. Every time I go to it, pine. I get pine needles, like very strong scent of pine. But uh, it's also like a like an industrial kind of manufactured smell to it, which is weird. Almost like a chemical smell with the pine. And that may be coming from the peat with it. Um, the little light peat that's in here. Kind of interacting with the, uh, the fresh recharred wood. Kind of gives it like a... Like a chemical kind of pine note, which is weird. I don't want to say like pine saw that you would get out of the cabinet, but it's like pine with a weird little um, chemical note to it. Once you get past that, um, as a fruit, very fruity whiskey, you get some peach or like a stone fruit, nectarine kind of peach, apricot. A little lemon oil, you get like lemon in there. And some caramel, because it's all experiments, so you're going to get like a caramel kind of vanilla to it. That peat's definitely there, though, on the, uh, the you know, the, the initial nose when you be smelling it. Let's get into the taste, guys. So it's got some complexity to it. I can see why some people like this. Um, you, right whenever you go into the taste, you start getting fruits. That peach comes out. You get a little citrus and a lemon. Almost like lighter fruits. Uh, like I said, stone fruits that you get in the nose. You get the caramel. And then mid-palate, peat comes in. And you get that peat lasts for a little bit. But the finish I find always kind of tuckers out quick on this one. I've added water to it. The peak comes down a little bit and it lasts a little bit longer of a finish, but for the most part, uh, it's just a fairly sharp finish on this one. Price point on it, um, you looking at, I think I got this one for 42 and some change. So it's in a $40 range, which is a uh, pretty much run of the mill, like basic scotch. It's your, your bottom line scotch. Um, but for a single malt, I mean, it's got a lot of complexity for a 12 year whiskey. And I think, this has always been split down the middle with Loch Lomond. Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, 
Uh, I could see that though. Like it's got some complexity to it. I could see it being an interesting pour, and you you know sit there with the whiskey and enjoy it. And for the price, with this much complexity, it's good. The only problem with it is it's got an off-putting note to it. It's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know. It's and really the, the finish is sharp. So I'm gonna knock it on the finish. I gotta knock it on that weird note. Complexity is good. And the initial price is great on it though. So it's kind of like, it's hard to knock it on a lot of stuff with it being only in a $40 range. But then again, I've had some pretty damn good whiskeys um, in the $40 range. I mean, you can go with um, Compass Box um, Artist Blend or Compass Box Glasgow Blend if you like the smokiness to it, you know? And that's a blended whiskey that would probably uh, get you a little bit further on the taste than this will, but Yeah, man, them fruits come in right away with that piney note. And that peat kind of enters mid-palate, stays with it for a little bit, and then kind of tuckers off fairly quick. It's not too bad, though, for the uh, for the price. I mean, it is what it is on this one. Um, Lock Loman, uh, the distillery, the people who make uh, this whiskey, like Lock Loman, they have other... Um, they have other distilleries in Scotland. I think there's Inch Murren, which is a, um, I don't want to say it's their sister company because they make um, Scottish grain whiskey. I've never seen a bottle of Inch Murren on the shelf, uh, but this is their um, their malt distillery makes the Loch Lomond, which is pretty much everywhere. As you can find it anywhere. But uh, we'll go into the uh, Whiskey Couillon rating on that one. I'm going to go ahead and give that one a 5.5. Five, you know, 555 and a half. Um, I don't know if I'd buy it again. That, that one kind of like straddles the line of whether I'd buy it again or um, whether, whether I wouldn't buy it again. Tell you the truth, I'd probably just take the $40 and just put it into something that uh, that I was looking to get. I mean, it, it's a good experience to get. If you if you never had Loch Lomond, I would say pick up a bottle if you can get it for like 40 bucks because um, it's worth experiencing and you know, adding a little bit of more experience and taste to your, to your, your scotch whiskey, if you're into scotch whiskey, or just whiskey in general, you know. Uh, it's, it's good to get a little bit taste experience with different whiskeys. But that's about it for Loch Lomond, guys. Uh, check us out, the Whiskey Couillons. If you, uh, if you like the whiskey content we're making, we always like to try different whiskeys and, and explore different things. Um... Hit us up on uh, on Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook account. But yeah, if you like what we're doing, like, subscribe. And um, if you've ever had Loch Lomond, the only one I've ever had was this 12-year. Um, if I see something maybe, you know, at a decent price range, I know they make an 18-year. If I see something in the, the later price ranges, I might check it out, you know. Maybe it's just a 12-year I don't like. I've had whiskeys where the one age statement or the other one, it's, it's, a, it's a big difference. You know, they always have that signature taste but it could change a little bit depending on the age statement so but yeah if you've ever had any lock lomans uh you know let us know what you think hit us up in the comments and uh see you guys in the next video